I'm Dr. Michael Allen, author of the book Receptor-Based Solutions, Functional Neurology Every Doctor Should Know. Here today with my niece Emily, we're talking about cross-extensor reflex or cross-cord reflex. It's the same idea as the patellar reflex that we've already discussed, and we can apply it contralaterally. If we check the patellar tendon on the left side, we should get functional facilitation of that rectus femoris ipsilaterally. However, because of the neurologic connection in the cord L2, 3, and 4, we should get facilitation of the rectus femoris ipsilaterally, but inhibition of the rectus femoris contralaterally. So let's test that. Hold up, don't let me push. So this would be considered a normal response. If we check the other side, hold strong, this right rectus femoris is functionally facilitated, we should get functional inhibition of the rectus femoris contralaterally. If we check the proximal aspect, hold strong, functional facilitation, hold up, don't let me push, functional inhibition, that's appropriate. Opposite side, hold strong, that's appropriate. It's not uncommon in patients that you might examine on the table that when you tap anywhere on the, on the rectus femoris, hold strong, you would get a facilitation contralaterally. This is pathological. Hold strong, don't let me push. Anytime you find one muscle weak on one side of the body and the same muscle weak on the opposite side, that always says there's a structural problem someplace specific. In this case, it's C345. So a bilateral inhibition of the rectus femoris, more correctly, a bilateral dysfunction of the rectus femoris, always says check the cervical spine. Most doctors, when a person has a rectus femoris Im imbalance, will examine the person's low back because of the neurologic connection at L234, snap the uh, reflex connection at L234. But this problem lies further up. Here's the issue. In the cervical cord, leg fibers are on the outside. Arm fibers are deeper on the inside. So if something affects the cord from the outside in, it's always going to affect the lower body before it affects the upper body. So don't get sucked into a low back problem and treating just the low back because often that low back problem is displayed from the cervical spine.